This video will cover the structure and function of different organelles found in a typical human cell. Any particular cell in our body may have variation on the number or structure of some of these organelles. Organelles are like little organs inside of the cell. They are small structures found in a cell that early scientists observed using a microscope. Many of these organelles are separate membrane-bound compartments and each has a different function. Here is a typical animal cell with several organelles indicated. Let's walk through some of these one by one. First, you should remember that all of these organelles are found within the cytoplasm, which is the inner fluid space of the cell. All of this area, all of this intracellular fluid, is enclosed by the plasma membrane which defines the boundary between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell, much the same way that our skin defines the outside of our bodies and the inside of our bodies. Our genetic information in the form of DNA is found in the nucleus of the cell. The nucleus is a double membrane structure which keeps the precious DNA safe from other molecules in the cell. There are openings in this structure known as the nuclear pores which allow molecules to enter or leave the nucleus. So what sort of things are traveling through these nuclear pores? The genetic material in our nucleus, our DNA, is, in a, is a nucleic acid polymer. It stores information for the cell, acting like a sort of hard drive. This information is stored as the sequence of bases in the DNA macromolecule, and this sequence acts as instructions or recipes for making proteins. These instructions are exported from the nucleus and delivered to another organelle, the ribosome. Our cells might have ribosomes in different parts of the cell. Many are found in a network of folded membranes that are near the nucleus. These ribosomes are not separate membrane-bound organelles. Instead, a ribosome is like a little protein machine that acts as a decoder or processor. Through a process known as translation, these ribosomes read the genetic instructions sent from the nucleus and decode the sequence of nucleotide bases into a sequence of amino acids in a protein. In order to decode the genetic information and build new proteins, our cells need energy. Most of the energy in the cell comes from reactions that happen inside of the mitochondria, which is like the power plant or the battery of the cell. In this organelle, nutrients like sugar are broken down fully into carbon dioxide, releasing the potential chemical energy that, they, that the sugar originally was storing in covalent bonds. The powerful reactions required to break apart and release the chemical energy in nutrients like sugar are compartmentalized within the mitochondria. This protects most of the rest of the cell from harmful byproducts like free radicals. The membrane-bound structure of the mitochondria is also key to how this organelle generates energy, but those details are beyond the scope of this video. Surrounding the nucleus is a folded membrane structure known as the endoplasmic reticulum. 
It is a network of membrane sacs in which protein synthesis or protein modification takes place. The endoplasmic reticulum, usually abbreviated ER, can be divided into two categories, the rough ER or the smooth ER, named for their appearance. The rough ER has a grainy appearance because these membranes are studded with ribosomes, which can then synthesize proteins directly into the space on the inside of the ER. These proteins move from the rough to the smooth ER and eventually travel through the rest of the cell in small, membrane-bound compartments known as vesicles. Vesicles coming from the ER or vesicles returning, perhaps from the surface after exocytosis, usually pass through the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is another collection of folded membrane sacs, and it acts as a sort of sorting or clearinghouse for vesicles. Another way to think of the Golgi is that it acts a little bit like an airport with proteins arriving from the ER on the cis side of the Golgi and leaving to go to the membrane on the trans side. There can be many different vesicle compartments in the cell, and often their cargo will be specialized for the function of a particular cell type. One vesicle found in many cells is the lysosome. This is a membrane-bound compartment that contains enzymes and conditions needed to break down and recycle materials in the cell. It acts as a sort of cellular trash bin. These vesicles and other organelles are moved about the cell on protein fibers or cables known as the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton gives the cell shape and structure and also allows for complex internal organization. This cytoskeleton is composed of long interlocking protein fibers. There are primarily three types of protein fibers that make up this structure, microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. Each has certain characteristics which make them particularly suited for certain functions. The cytoskeleton can move the plasma membrane inwards for exocytosis and can also move the membrane outwards to make projections known as microvilli. These cytoskeleton cables, in particular the microtubules, originate in the cell at the centriole. The centriole is the base of the cytoskeleton. If microtubules are like railroad lines in the cell, the centriole is the terminus station, or the rail yard. This organelle is particularly important during cell division, as one centriole is found on one end of the cell and another on the opposite side of the cell, and this helps to pull or separate materials to each end. Let's take a closer look at a few of these organelles. The three that we will focus on are the mitochondria, ribosomes, and nucleus. Remember that the nucleus sends genetic instructions to the ribosome to be processed and translated into protein, and that all of these steps require energy supplied by the mitochondria. Inside of the nucleus, the DNA is loosely packaged with proteins known as histones. Together, this material is known as chromatin. For materials to get in or out of the nucleus, they must cross the double membrane nuclear envelope structure. Materials that cross do so at nuclear pores, which are a complex made of several different proteins. Any import or export into or out of the nucleus is tightly controlled. The ribosome is unlike most of the or other organelles we have talked about, since it's not a separate membrane-bound compartment. In 
Instead, the ribosome is a large complex of several different proteins and RNAs, grouped into two different subunits, the large and the small. These subunits join together to read the genetic instructions, acting like a little molecular decoding machine. This decoding process is known as translation. The mitochondria are a membrane-bound organelle that generates energy for the cell. In fact, the mitochondria has a double membrane structure. The outer membrane separates the mitochondria from the cytoplasm. Between the outer membrane and the inner membrane is the appropriately named intermembrane space. The inner membrane encloses the matrix and it is folded many times over forming structures known as crista. Inside the matrix, the mitochondria has some of its own DNA and ribosomes, which is thought to be left over from a time when mitochondria were free living bacteria that were eventually incorporated into our own cells. The crista folds give the inner membrane greater surface area, which is important because the mitochondria actually generate energy by allowing ions to flow from the intermembrane space into the matrix.